right, so here we have a number is subtracted from 10, the result is 16. So again, let's go through our steps. We already read it once. We read it from left to right. Step one, look for danger words. So do I have the word from? Do I have the word than? If you do find any of these words, what you wanna do is box that danger word. So notice I do have the word from. So you wanna box because you know that we're gonna pivot, all right? So this will have to go in the front, this will have to go in the back. So as soon as you see a danger word, box it and remember you have to pivot. Next step, translate anything that says a number, the number, some number, cross it out, use the variable X. So here's the word a number, let's cross it out and make it the variable x. Next step, step three, translate any key buzzwords. So notice we have is subtracted. You know subtraction just means a minus symbol. The result is, there's your equal sign. Now remember, we're going to rewrite this using only letters, numbers, and operation symbols. So you probably noticed that we have the word 10 and the word 16. You can cross them out now and put them as numbers. Anytime you recognize this, you can rewrite them at any time. Okay. Do we have any and statements? No, we do not have any and statements in this problem. So our fifth step is rewrite the problem. We're only going to use letters, numbers, and operation symbols, which is good because everything else got canceled out. Every other word got canceled out or boxed. So normally we would do x minus 10 equals 16. But remember we had that danger word? That's the reason why I told you to box it because if you go too fast and you didn't see it, you might have said X minus 10 equals 16 and you would have solved it and thought that X would equal 26. So go slow because this is box. Uh-oh, pivot. X means to go back, 10 means to come forward. So it's actually 10 minus X. Only in this phrase does it pivot. Once we hit an equal sign or a comma, we're done with the flipping. We can continue. Equals 16. Once you have your equation written, notice there's no words, just numbers, letters, and operation symbols, you can solve. So you know this is a regular equation, so you have a left and right hand side. You probably already recognize this is the only side that has variables. This must be constant. You know that this 10 needs to move, so the opposite of a positive 10 would be a negative 10 to both sides. You know these cross out, so you have negative x. Remember the negative is still there. The subtraction is still there. And then you know a positive and a negative. You got to do difference. So we're going to get a 6. Why is it positive? Because remember 16 players beat 10 players, so that's why it's team positive. We're not done yet because we don't have x by itself. You need to get rid of the negative. Remember, there's an understood one in front. So to get rid of a coefficient that's negative or negative one, we divide both sides by negative one. And we finally get our answer of x equals negative six. Okay? So you gotta be careful when you have the word from or them. The reason why you have to be careful is because when you're dealing with subtraction, subtraction from or less than, they're not commutative. You have to have them in a certain order. Because remember, 10 minus two is eight. But if I flip the order and put the two first, two minus 10, you get a negative eight. You get two different answers. So order really matters when you have subtraction and the danger word from and then. Let's look at our next problem here. The sum of a number and negative seven is two. 
Okay. We read the problem. We went from left to right. We're going to look to see if there's any danger words. Nah, I look at it again and I don't have any danger words. I don't have this word from and I don't have this word than. Next, translate anything that says a number, the number, some number. Just cross it out. So you see I have the word a number. Cross it out. That's going to become the letter X. Then next, we're going to translate any key buzzwords. So do you see anything that would automatically make you think of an operation? Well, is over here, is your equal sign. The sum of means we're going to be adding some items. And maybe that negative sign, negative, you can cross out. Because negative 7, written as a number, would be just a negative sign and a 7. And if you want to take care of the 2 right now and put it as a digit, you can. So I got rid of most of those key buzz words. The next thing I want to do is look to see if I have the word and. And this right here. This is the first guy that has an and in it. Now. What are we going to do with this and? We have to determine what type of and is it. Does it say and this operation? Like, does it say and this addition or and this sum? Or is it by itself? Is it an and that is separated between two variables or two numbers? Let's see. We have an and. What's in front of it? A letter. What's behind it? Negative 7. So when you have a letter, a variable, and a constant, this is a plain and, okay? So that's this first and here. It's by itself between two variables and or constants. So it's between, for us, a variable and a constant. Then what do we do? We act as a placeholder for the operation that precedes it, or basically precedes it is a fancy way of saying what's in front of it. So this and doesn't necessarily mean addition, okay? I think a lot of people think if I said seven and three, they automatically think that it has to be a plus sign between seven and three. And it's just a placeholder. So whatever operation that's in front of it will go there. So if this one said the difference of, then this symbol would have been a subtraction. Okay. And is just a placeholder. If this said the product of, then where you see the word and, you put a multiplication symbol. Because this one has the sum, this plus sign will go where the and is. Okay. Makes sense because how many operations do you know starts with the addition symbol? You're usually adding two numbers or two letters. You don't start with just a plus sign. You don't start with just a division symbol. You usually start with a number or a letter first, then the operation. So this guy was out of order, and where it goes is where the and is. The and is that placeholder. So now we can rewrite. We don't put the plus sign because it's going to go where the word and is. We're going to start with the letter X. Then the plus sign. Negative 7 is this equals 2. Now that it looks like a traditional equation, then you can solve for the variable x. So all you're going to do is variables on one side, constants on the other. You should know that this 7 needs to move over. It's not a variable. Additive inverse. Now, it's a little confusing here because you might say, wait, what's the additive inverse? You have a positive and a negative. Well, remember, if you had two signs in front of it, we said, hey, how many negative signs do you have in front? If it's an even amount, we know that number is a positive. If there's an odd amount, we know that is a negative. So when you have this, one negative, that means this thing is negative. If there's a negative here and a negative here, then we know that the 7 would be positive. So the opposite of a negative 
which means I would have to add 7 to both sides. These cancel out. And then 2 plus 7, they're both positive, so we add, we get 9. Okay, so you got to read these very carefully. And like I said, we finally got an and. And does not automatically mean addition. It is just a placeholder for whatever operation that's in front of it. So again, if this said difference, you put a minus sign here. If this said product, you're going to put a multiplication symbol. If this says quotient, you put a division symbol here. Uh -huh.